Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today I'm so excited once again to bring you another unit roster preview for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. Another exclusive preview, so thank you again to the mod team. And if you are enjoying these guys, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And today, of course, we are looking at the glorious Athenians with some very, very awesome looking units. I mean, honestly, what else do we expect when we are looking at these units? Now, they are always so beautiful and so stunning, but we are going to go through the whole roster once again, including the reform units. Now, a couple of historical notes uh, from the mod team themselves, so thank you to them for this again. Uh, at this point, Athens had abolished obligatory military service. So as you can see, the roster might be a little smaller than some of the other units, but that is for a historical reason. They didn't have that many um, military units in service at this point in time. But they do have a kind of special unit, which we'll go on to in a little bit, the unit of Marines over here. And that is to represent their naval traditions and the fact that they still owned a few Aegean islands at the time. So, without further ado, guys, let's get into the roster. And we'll, of course, start with the missile troops. Now, we won't really go over the stats for these guys too much because we've gone over them so many times. Um, but we're going to have a look at how they look. And, of course... They look stunning once again with their bum bags, their pouches, and all the different details. Like we've talked about many times before, the Greek slingers are fine. They are fine. All missile units do good damage in this game, as they should do. Um, and uh, they'll do a decent amount of damage on a battlefield. But like we've talked about before, if you can get the Greek archers, I would get those over the slingers because the only advantage the slingers have is that they have slightly more ammo and only 10 meters more of range which really if we uh, select both of these units you can have a look it's not really that much difference you can see in terms of the range they're not going to make a huge amount more difference uh, by having that extra 10 meters range now if they had 160 range for example it would be uh, it would be a bigger toss up but for that 140 range and for the few more missile, a uh, few more uh, bits of ammo that they have, then yeah, I don't think it's worth taking these over the archers, but they are very cheap. So if you are in a bit of a struggling uh, financial situation, you may want to take these guys over the archers. But as we've seen before, seven total defense, not good at all. Three morale, so they will run at the sound of the enemy breathing rather than when the enemy are even close to them. And a melee attack of four, which is abysmal. A missile attack of four, which is not good either. But more ammo and more missile range than we see from the Greek archers. Now let's move on to the Greek archers. And you can see the colors and the different designs in here. We are seeing a lot of more washed blues, as you can see with the Athenian colors. The white and blue of the banner there. So we are seeing a few different colors from what we've seen before, which is fantastic. And again, they look brilliant, don't they? I just love, uh, are you, well, you can obviously, obviously tell that they're not armored and all that sort of thing, but they just look stunning, uh, nonetheless, looking very cool indeed. But when we talk about the Greek archers, as we've talked about them many times before, they have a defense of nine, four morale, so not great morale, five melee attack, and a six missile attack. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's either been changed or slightly lower than some of the other Greek factions in terms of the missile attack. Or maybe the uh, archers have just had a redu reduction overall in terms of their damage. Because they did do a lot of damage before. Uh, but yeah, uh, great unit. Going to do a lot of damage in battle. Just never get them into melee because they will run straight away. And they will die. <laughs> they will die very, very, very quickly. Uh, so the four morale, five melee attack, six missile attack with 25 ammunition and a total defense of nine. Remember, that defense is mainly from defense skill. So they will fall to missiles just as quickly as they are killing enemies to missiles. So try not to get them in the line of shot for the enemy. Now let's move on to our Akontistai, which are a, a Javi unit, a low tier Javi unit. And again, looking very nice. I like the yellow uh, on these guys. A lot of blue and yellow that we're seeing over here. And again, 
This guy, he knows what needs to be done. But six morale, six melee attack, and nine missile attack. So a bit better morale than the archers and a bit better melee attack. But again, you don't want these guys in your melee. Once again, with the defense, we have 12 defense. Most of that is defense skill. So the armor of one will mean that they will fall to missiles very quickly. Honestly, if you're using these guys in battle, use them as missile bait. That is the best use for these guys as a meat shield for your men. Nine missile attack, not too bad at all, with seven ammo on the uh, seven javis ready to fire with a 60 missile range, which you can see is actually quite a decent, decent range. Let's move on to the Greek Peltas, the better version of the... Uh, Akuntistai over here, 23 defense this time. Again, not much armor and shield, only two armor and three shield. So they have five defense against missiles, which is fine, um, but they still will start falling to missiles relatively quickly. But 18 defense skill is in fact very good with uh, 12 morale, 10 melee attack, and a missile attack of nine with their seven javis once again. So in melee, these guys are not great, but they are not too bad either. And look at them. They do look fantastic. We have seen plenty of these guys before. And every time, they look brilliant. I love the uh, the hide shield design on these shields here, as you can see. Okay, very cool indeed. Very, very cool. Very nice to see. But a decent Peltast unit nonetheless. You're always going to try and use these just for Javis. But if they get into melee, these guys may actually do okay. Not fantastically, but okay. And that 12 morale means they're going to stick around the battlefield for quite a bit more. So let's go on to the Athenian uh, Peripoloi. The Athenian Peripoloi. These guys are sort of a uh, Spearman Archer unit. And look at them. I love the look of these guys. I love the tiny little shields that they've got. Uh, on their arms, on their firing arms with the uh, the bows. Looking very cool indeed. And you can tell, once again, one armor. Not much armor, but they do have three shields. So they're going to die to missiles very quickly. But a 20 defense skill is nothing to scoff at at all. That is a really, really good defense skill. And a 14 morale, 12 melee attack, 9 missile attack with 24, um, 24 missiles ready to fire. And 130 missile range. These guys are your premier archers. And these guys are in fact fantastic archers. Nine missile attack. The only thing they're lacking is, is a long range missile. Um, that is the only thing that these guys are lacking. But 130 is still going to be good enough for you. You're going to get plenty of damage done uh, to the enemy. But that morale of 14 and melee attack of 12 is nothing to scoff at at all. They will do fine in melee against most units. They might not be able to beat them, especially on the harder difficulties, but they will hold the line for a little while. So if you do have to get them into melee, then they're going to do okay. That is pretty much where I'm going with this. <laughs> but again, look at these boyos. Looking very nice indeed. Fantastic. And uh, A for Athens. A for Athens for the boys over here. I know it's not an A. I know it's not an A. Before you guys... Before you guys start start uh, getting angry in the comments. I know it's not an A. I'm just joking, okay? Okay? Right. Let's move on to the infantry. Yes, the infantry. And honestly, this infantry, every single unit of the infantry looks absolutely beautiful. So let's start with the Athenian Hoplites. Or Oplites, I, I believe you'd say it in uh, ancient Greek. Uh, but Hoplites... You know, sounds sounds better to me. Uh, so I'm going to say it wrong. Uh, but stunning looking units once again. Look at the detail. I know we do this every single time. But just look at the detail going on in these units. It is truly staggering every time we come here and take a deep dive. Honestly, every time I do come into one of these unit previews, uh, I zoom in and have a look. And I see something new. That I've not seen before, which is just testament to the artists um, that are making um, these units over there at RTR Imperium Serectum. Looking very, very nice. I love the blue plumage on these helms as well. I think it looks awesome. We saw a lot of red plumage with the Spartans, which looks really cool. But I quite like that blue. That blue is very nice indeed. 
Very cool indeed. And the Shields, once again, the stars of the show, looking fantastic. But let's talk about the Athenian Hoplites then, shall we? 39 defense. Very, very good defense. Of which they have 8 shield and 9 armor. 17 defense against missiles, guys. They are not going to fall to missiles quickly at all. 22 defense skill is fantastic as well. But 13 morale and 13 melee attack is, is about standard. Um, so, a great unit. A great early game unit. This unit is going to be strong, strong, strong early game. And even strong going into the late game. Especially with that huge defense. They might not be the best for flanking and attacking with that 13 melee attack. But they are going to do fantastically in defense. And will hold the line really, really nicely. And as we've talked about, they look stunning as well while they are doing it so let's move on to the athenian epilectoi over here another spearman unit but a bit more of an elite unit as you can see so they're pretty much same stats apart from the fact that they have more defense and more morale so they got 16 morale compared to the 13 of the hoppates and they have 41 defense as opposed to the 39 defense but that is all in defense skills they have 24 defense skill and these guys are actually got the mix of blue and red plumage and can we have a look behind yes we can and once again the capage tells us that these guys are very elite units indeed i've not seen see this is another thing i, I yeah uh, i must have seen that cape before but I, I love it i love it nonetheless and having a look at these guys down the line look how glorious they are and how ready to fight they are looking very mean indeed. Very mean indeed. Very cool. Very cool. I love the look of these units so much. Uh, but yes, 16 morale, 13 melee attack and 41 defense. Again, 17 defense against missiles, but 24 defense skill. Even if they go against an armor-piercing unit, they've still got 24 defense skill against it. So they are going to be a fantastic unit in melee, guys. Again... I would say probably more geared towards defense than offense. But that 16 morale means they're not going to break uh, at all, really. Apart from huge morale shocks like the general dying, being surrounded, that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, looking very, very cool. But as I said, a nice elite spearman unit for you there to use when you need it. Very cool indeed. So let's move on to the Epibartai. The Marines, and uh, I have a little tidbit for you here on the Marines. I believe they are one of Tone's, the Mod Father's favorite looking units in the whole game that, uh, that they've created, and it's easy to see why, isn't it? And he did, uh, did let me know to show you some of these glorious shields that they have on offer here. My personal favorite is between the octopus and let me find the other one if I'm looking correctly. And yeah, these seahorses. I love the seahorses uh, on here. And very cool indeed. Just look at those units. They do look fantastic. And once again, I love the blue plumage on these helms. The guy's looking very mean and ready to go as usual. Uh, but the swords as well, the uh, the curved sword, they're looking very cool indeed. But let's have a look at some of their stats while we just stare into their glorious looking, uh, looking guys over here. 15 morale, really decent morale with a melee attack of uh, 11, which is not too great. But a missile attack of 14 for two javis with a missile range of 50. So they fire their javis before charging the enemy. Um, but I think that morale kind of makes up for their lack of melee attack, most likely um, because they're going to stick in the fight for a bit longer. Uh, but they use the missile weapon before charging, well armored, 7 armor, 7 shields, so 14 defense against missiles, so really good defense against missiles again, and 19 defense skill for a total defense of 33. And they are light infantry, as they are marines, guys. Oh, they just look fantastic. We don't have capage, I don't believe. So we know they're not quite elite. But coming around to the back, you can just see the detail that's gone into these guys. They look fantastic. There's the officer. The officer's just marching through the ranks, inspecting everyone. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Yeah, that's got to be... Oh, look at those shields. 
They look fantastic. As I say, I think the octopus one is my favorite. Look at that. Look at the detail. Even... I didn't even notice that before. The detail on the shield of the, uh, the, the uh, suckers on the tentacles of the octopus there. Fantastic to see. Very, very nice indeed. Right. Well, what would I use these units for? I would very much use these units as a flanking unit with a full line of your spearmen in the middle. If you can get the uh, epilectoi, uh, if not the hoplites. And I would use these guys to flank and do as much damage in the flank as possible. They are light infantry, so they are fast moving guys. And finding a fast moving unit with seven armor is quite rare in this mod so that is a really really big selling point they're going to be able to chase down archers that sort of thing you want to get them around the flanks deal the damage into the back of the enemy with their javis and then charge in for that morale shock and these guys are going to be very 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 useful uh doing that indeed what a fantastic unit really really good it adds a lot of questions into how you want to build your army really um because you don't want a full line of these because of their 11 melee attack. Uh, but you want them in your army for that morale shock and for that fast moving ability. Never underestimate a fast moving unit in this mod, guys. Never underestimate a fast moving unit. They are really, really useful. But anyway, let's move on to our post-reform cavil... Uh, sorry, infantry unit. And in fact... For the Athenians, the post-reform uh, unit is the Theroperoi, which is something that you normally get by standard. But like we've talked about before, uh, at this time, the uh, Athenians didn't have a standing army. So by getting sort of these modern javelin-throwing troops that are not the Marines um, into the action later on, um, you are just going to be bringing yourself up to being equal. That's why you need to get as many epilectoi when you get to the mid-game as possible. Um, but yeah, that's why these guys are post-reform, like we've talked about already. But let's have a look at some of their stats. We've got a standard sort of Theroperoi stats there. A 34 defense with 12 defense against missiles. 22 defense skill, which is pretty decent indeed. 14 morale, 12 melee attack. And a 14 missile attack for their two Javis. So really powerful Javi, um, Javi um, throwing before they get into the fight. Uh, but again, that 12 melee attack's not huge. But like we talked about, I probably would consider these guys more a defensive unit. Again, with that 34 defense, 12 melee attack. But with the Javis, they're very versatile, aren't they? You can use them to flank. You can use them to defend in the middle. But it's completely up to you. But very, very nice looking units once again. And with the uh, sort of rounder, longer, uh, sorry, the more oval, longer shield there. So a bit more protection from those shields. Uh, and again, some fantastic design going on all across this glorious unit. Um, and they do have a bit of capage. So we know that they're kind of post-reform, but not fully elite units like we've seen before but again looking absolutely stunning just those little details that we talk about every time look at that glorious 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 but anyway guys let's move on to our cavalry and let's first of all talk about our general which is a greek uh, general's bodyguard which is this standard cavalry bodyguard and they look beautiful don't they i love these uh, designs on the horse armor uh, and the sort of, uh, I'm guessing that would be a leopard, but I don't exactly know. Um, but looking fantastic nonetheless. And of course, they are very strong with 18 morale, 14 melee attack and an alt attack of 13. With a total defense of 34, 15 of which is armor, guys. 15 armor, 19 defense skill and a charge of 47. But like we've talked about before, your bodyguard, because they have so few men in them, and we see the capage behind, I really like this design of helm over here, looking very cool with the uh, sort of wreath around the top of it, very cool. Um, but like we've talked about before, uh, these guys, you're going to want to use them to charge or to kill enemy cavalry. I don't really, when it's only a 13-man regiment, getting these guys stuck in melee, every single one they lose, 
they lose so much more attacking capability. So getting your charges in, charging into the enemy is going to be really important. Unless, obviously, if it's your faction leader or faction air where they have quite a few more troops, then you can use them for extended melee combat. But as I've said before, I would prefer those guys to be charging into the enemy and then... Uh, re retreating and then charging again. So let's move on to the second unit, which we have the Zistophoroi, the heavy cavalry of the Athenians over here. And look at those spears. They are ready to charge the enemy. They also have their swords as well, of course. And look how glorious these boys look. Looking very cool indeed. Look at the design and the detail that is on here once again. And I love the color scheme. The yellow and blue, to me, works really, really nicely. I do like it quite a lot. And again, you can see they've got the capes. So we know they're a pretty elite cavalry force over here. Heavy cavalry, of course. 15 morale. 12 melee attack with an ultimate attack of 12. So it doesn't really matter whether they're in melee or if they're just charging. They're going to have the same amount of attack. But a 23 defense, 9 of which is armor, of course, no shield. So they are quite vulnerable to missiles, especially javelins. Um, so keep them away from javelins as much as you can. That includes Prodromoi, guys. So make sure you keep them away from Prodromoi because they will lose. And they won't be able to chase the Prodromoi away because the Prodromoi will be a lot quicker than these heavy cavalry. Uh, but a defense skill of 14, which is pretty decent. And a charge of 35. But as usual... These are a, uh, yeah, that, that charge is so, so strong that, again, you want to get that charge bonus as much as you can rather than leaving these guys in extended melee. The only time I tend to use my Zistaphoroi in extended melee is if I know that a unit's going to break or if you're fighting enemy cavalry where it's just a slice and dice situation where one... Uh, one side needs to win the cavalry battle, and you're both hoping that you do. <laughs> so, yeah, those are the two situations where I'd leave them in extended melee. But apart from that, you've got to charge and barge your way through the enemy with these boys. But a fantastic unit nonetheless. Really good heavy cavalry. And let's have a look at our Prodromoi. The, uh, the worst cavalry unit we have on offer here. Nine morale, which isn't too bad. I mean, it's not good, but it isn't too bad. And again, look at the look on these boys. Looking very nice. The clasps on the horses, everything looking fantastic. The detail. Uh, but 12, uh, sorry, 9 morale, 10 melee attack. Not fantastic, but not terrible. 9 missile attack with 7 uh, ammo of a 60 range, which is quite decent. And a 12 defense with three of that only being armor, nine defense skill, and a charge of 27. So like we've talked about before with the Prodromoi, we've seen them a lot of times. Um, they, yeah, I don't I don't like them. I don't tend to bring them very often uh, because I don't like Javi Cavalry. I love Horse Archers, but not Javi Cavalry as much. But you can, in fact, do a lot of damage with these guys if you use them correctly. They're just very micro-intensive. So if you want to, you know, do a lot of damage with these guys, you're going to have to micro a lot. But... That doesn't take away from the fact that they can still do a really large amount of damage in a battle. And not necessarily in terms of kills in numbers, but say you were fighting some Epilectoi and, you know, you whittled them down by 10, maybe even with all their ammo gone. It'd be more than 10, but say it was only 10. They will have chipped away at these guys' armor and shield rating so that when your, uh, your troops go into moving, they'll fall a lot quicker. So... Yeah, they do do some decent damage in battles. Um, it's a crazy day. It's a crazy day when I'm praising missile Javi cavalry, guys. <laughs> so, take that take that noted down because <laughs> it's not going to happen very often. Uh, but yeah, uh, fantastic. And But yeah, not, not the best defense skill. As we've talked about before, you don't want these guys going into melee unless you absolutely have to. Right, on to the post-reform cavalry units, and we do have two here. We have the Tarantine Cavalry and the Aspido Foroi. Firstly, let's talk about the Tarantine, 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 Tarantine Cavalry. Uh, 15 morale, fantastic, fantastic morale, with a melee attack of 10. And these guys are, in fact, a missile javi hybrid unit with uh, 7 javis, 10 missile attack, fantastic amount of damage from those missiles there with a total defense of 24 and a charge of 29 
Now, they don't have much defense skill, but a shield of 7 and armor of 7, 14 defense against missiles. These guys are not going to die against missiles quickly, and they do look stunning once again. We've got Cerberus over here. Very nice indeed. Yeah, they look fantastic. These guys are more uh, sort of a red uh, plumage design over here, but probably because they are Tarantine and not full Athenian. Uh, Tarantine. But yeah, 15 morale is fantastic. The 10 melee attack and the 24 defense in terms of melee, not amazing, but will stand up. Will stand up. So that charge of 29, once these guys have used their javis, you can go and use them in melee and see what happens. So a fantastic unit, a really good sort of uh, versatile unit over there. So you can use those guys as you like. But on to the Aspido Foroi, the uh, sort of more heavy cavalry than the Zistaforoi. So let's have a look at their stat comparison. You can see the Aspido Foroi actually have one less alt attack, but the same in terms of the morale and melee attack. But the Aspido Foroi have one more charge, and of course they have seven shield. So that makes their defense go from 23 to 27, so a lot more defense. Um, only 7 armor compared to the Zistaforo's 9, and 1 less defense skill, but that 7 shield. Oh, look at the shields on these boys as well. They are stunning. I love the gold uh, around the edges and the gold in the middle. Very, very cool indeed. Very cool looking unit, in fact. Really cool. I love them. Uh, but a charge of 36 as well. So a really, really strong heavy cavalry unit. Very nice indeed. Not going to stand up to cataphracts, of course, that sort of thing. But a very, very good heavy cavalry unit, especially in the Greek Peninsula. Greek Peninsula? Is that... Is it a peninsula? I, I don't know. Like the, the Greek areas. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a peninsula when you get, like, uh, onto the Spartan bit, right? But, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> not, the, not the part where Athens is, surely. Uh, but anyway... Uh, yeah, looking very nice. A very strong heavy cavalry unit. But again, this the foray and these, they're pretty well matched. These guys are just a bit more defensive in terms of they got a bit more defense, so they're going to die less. So we are going to do more damage overall going through a battle, and they look fantastic. Really, really nice unit there. But anyway, guys, without further ado, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that little review and preview of the units that we uh, have going forward. Please do like and subscribe, guys, if you did enjoy it. It does really help the channel out. Uh, but anyway, let us move uh, our men forward. And we're going to get our Javi Cavi over here. And the rest of our Cav. I think we're going to go to the left flank. And we are fighting our next, uh, next unit roster. We are going to be having a look at a little sneak preview of these boyos. Here they are. It is Syracuse, of course. Very, very nice indeed. And this is very much on the hot list. Uh, or the uh, the list for playing uh, these units, uh, these nations next time around. I think I'm going to be playing them as a unit, uh, as a nation, when it comes down to the next um, release. So, yeah, uh, as in Syracuse, I'm saying, not, not Athens. Because it should be very, very, very difficult as a campaign. Should always be fun. Oh, God, we've got the cavalry coming in. So let's get our melee cavalry. Who are you? Yeah, Syracuse and heavy cavalry coming in for us. So I'm hoping our Epilectoi should be able to uh, defend. Taking a charge while running is never the best situation. You want to take it standing still. And we've already got our Prodromoi into the fight, which is not something we really wanted to do uh, <laughs> early on here. Make sure you're firing. All my Javis. Are, oh, look at the amount of Javis that are going through now. Who are you? Prodromoi. Yeah, we're not going to catch them. But let's get into those Greek archers if we can. Oh, the fighting is starting. Very nice indeed. The Theroperoi. The Thorakitai are through. Let's get our Epilectoi into the fight. Come on, Cav. Let's go. Oh, they don't like that. They don't like that at all. 
I'm going to get my Prodromoy. I'm going to see this is what the, the Prodromoy are there for in the end. Oh, I guess, uh, yeah, let's get rid of those Greek archers. This time we might actually win a battle. Wow. Uh, you actually go into the Thorakitai. The Thorakitai is a strong, strong boy unit. Right, now it's time we charge these guys. See, we're charging with the Prodromoy, etc. Uh, and the Aspidophoroi. No, sorry, the Tarantine Cavalry, not the Aspidophoroi. Uh, just charging into missile units. That's not too risky. Uh, like we talked about, as I said before with them, that you don't really want to get them in melee. But charging missile archers and units is not really something that's too worrying uh, with the Prodromoy. And like I said, the uh, Tarantine Cavalry are quite versatile. Uh, you can use them for a lot of different things. We've absolutely shredded uh, those archers over there now. So the Prodromoy are taking some real damage. We fully surrounded the Thorakitai over here. We're going for a big charge on the back of the Syracuse and Hoplites. And let's get into the Uzonoi with those boys. They are fantastic for cleaning up. Uh, routing missile units because of how fast moving these boys are. Let's go. That should be a big charge. Yeah, broken them instantly. Nice. Let's get out. And we got those boys. Get after them. And let's go for a big charge on the Cicel Theroperoi. Let's watch this charge. Here it comes, boys. I mean, there's a rock in the way, but oh well. <laughs> oh, oh my, oh. Oh. That charge did absolutely destroy them. That was brutal. <laughs> Honestly, brutal. Now, where's the rest of them men? There we are. Well, anyway, <laughs> what a fantastic victory, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. And yeah, the uh, the cavalry doing the most of the damage there. Really good. Please do like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video.